sickness and things that goes on with the people of God. But we're also mindful that we are on social media, so we are careful how we do name callings and so forth and so on. But our prayers and our hearts are always with the bereaved and with the sick, the people of God that are actually uh, drawing closer to God through the circumstances that they're going to. If we can't be there for each other, then we really miss the biggest part of it all. So certainly our heart goes out to the bereaved, to the sick, to uh, those that are struggling in their own way. And as we pray to Dale Hartman, we're going to actually be mindful of that as you open us up with the word of prayer, that we look to God for comfort and for all the things that only God can provide. Amen. And we know that God can do it because He is God. And we're grateful to Him. We, we see God in everything. Dale Hartman, if you will, please. Oh, so many of them ask him, Father, in the name of Jesus. We Jesus. thank you, O oh God, because you are God, and there is no other. You're the true one. Yes, Oh, Lord. God, we thank you for all the wonderful blessings. Yes. Oh, God, bless the breed. Yes. Family. Yes. Oh, God, Lord, we thank you because we love one another. Yes, sir. And, oh, God, I thank you. I was deep sinking in sin. But your love lifted me. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, bless yes. the yes. saints of God. Bless oh. the assembly yes. of God that we may be stronger Stronger. in every way. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus Jesus Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kingdom values. Kingdom values. Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 31. The rich young ruler and God's call for selflessness. The Bible teaches us four things. Who God is, who we are, our relationship with each other, our relationship with God. Man. Those four things, if we get those down pat, we're on our way. We're on our way. Man. Questions left to ponder from last week. How does knowing Jesus help us to obey his command? Number two, when do material things reach the level of idol worship? Mm. And number three, what does it mean to put God first? We say it all the time, but what does it really mean? As we go through the lesson today, keep in mind, keep in mind, God is reality. Yes. All the things we think we know uh -huh. are just our perceptions. Mm -hmm. And our perception is not reality. It is our perception. We looked last Sunday or so about all the things that can affect our perception. And there are countless things that affect how we see things. Yeah. But because we see it one way, that doesn't mean it is. Amen. We cannot trust ourselves. So what do we do? We put our complete trust in God. Yeah. Our relationship with God is based on faith, and it is according to God's purpose. Our perception, sometimes we think it's about us, but it's actually about God. Yeah. God has left this 70, 80, 90, 100 years that we live. It is for Him. Eternity, that's his gift to us. Amen. God gave uh, man dominion over everything. And sometimes we ask the question, why does God allow? Why does God allow? It's not about God allowing evil. It's about us bringing the evil. Because man had dominion, and we as men, women, we accepted the spirit of wickedness. Choices come with consequences. So the world then is ruled by evil. Not God, it is ruled by evil. God's going to take it back. But right now it's ruled by evil. So when we see these evil things happening, we don't have to ask why, we know why. It is because man chose the spirit of wickedness. God gave man a choice, we rejected God, and we chose wickedness. Now once we choose wickedness, we don't get to control how much wickedness we do or when we do it and so forth. We are servants to whom we choose. Man. We can't rule spirits. Spirits rule us. Right. And so man is being controlled by the gods of this world. Our sense of moral is set by the gods of this world. Our sense of right and wrong is set by the gods of this world. So we watch people, we watch nations, countries, cities, people come up with some of the wickedest ideas and think it is so good. We are ruled by the spirit of wickedness. In the midst of this, the kingdom of God came. 
in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the midst of all of this, the kingdom of God came. And Jesus said it is like the grain of mustard seed. It was Jesus and Jesus alone yes. as the kingdom of God. Yes. And it grew like a mustard seed. It grew. And we ourselves, hopefully, are part of the kingdom of God. Oh, yes. If we are in the spirit of God, we surely are a part of the kingdom of God. If we're living under the power of deception, then there's no telling where we are. So today we're going to look at kingdom values. We can look at kingdom values versus the values of the world. And we're going to kind of touch on that as we go. But we're going to go deeper. And we're going to look at kingdom values. We're going to kind of stay in the religious world. And we're going to look at kingdom values versus our idea of theology, our idea of Christianity. We, we all understand, uh, in essence, kingdom values versus the system of the world. Well, at least we do to a degree. We, we understand what God is about and we understand what the world is about to a degree. But there's a lot of deception there also. But we're going to look within the religious world and look at how the kingdom of value, the ki kingdom values rather, opposes our idea of theology at times. In the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, Exodus lists a whole lot of things. I'm just kind of summarizing it with this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse number three. The commandments, the commandments of God in the Old Covenant. In the New Covenant, John wrote in 1 John 3 and 23, and this is his commandment. List them for me, John. List them for me. That we should believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Anything else, John? Yes. And love one another yes. as he gave us command. Yes. And John listed nothing else. So we are left then with we are to believe on the name of Jesus Christ yes. and love one another. John is telling us that's the new covenant commandments. When we put it alongside the old covenant, here's what we're looking at. The old covenant is telling us love God, love our neighbor. The new covenant is telling us, love God, love others. Yes. Uh -huh. The Old Testament, how do we do that? The Old Testament is telling us, in order to do that, we have to obey the Ten Commandments and the other 600 plus laws. If we obey all of these, in the midst of obeying them all, we will love God and we will love our neighbors as well. The New Covenant points to us and says, believe on the name of Jesus Christ and love others. All we have to understand is how to believe on Jesus. Yeah. How do we believe on Jesus? We believe on Jesus by following the pattern that Moses got from God himself. Repent, see Jesus as Lord, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And how do we show love? Through the ministry of reconciliation. What we just covered was the entire purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. It is for us personally to repent, see Jesus as Lord, yeah. accept the gift that God has given us, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we have done that, we have done what God required us to do. We are in obedience to his command that we believe on Jesus Christ. How do we believe on Jesus? We believe on him as our Savior. How do we believe on Jesus? We believe on him by taking him on in water baptism in Jesus' name. How yeah. do we believe on him? We believe on him by receiving the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And we have done that. We believe in Jesus. So let nobody tell you, well, all you have to do is believe, and then you say the sinner's prayer, Lord, forgive me for my sins, and then I'm done. No, you follow the pattern. Yes. Accept Jesus as Lord, that's step one. Be baptized in Jesus' name, and it's not just an outward show to the world, it is an inward consciousness being aware of God's command. Yes. It is called obedience. Amen. And we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit then leads us, guides us, and teaches us how to love. Yeah. The Bible said the love of God is shared upon in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't love like God wants us to Amen. love. Amen. So that's what we require. And then we talk about loving others. How do we love others? We share that, that same message with others. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that simple. 
The rest of the Bible, all that we're going to study, all that we're going to go through, will support what we just heard. Repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and enter the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. That's it. And the whole Bible is going to support that. Yeah. All the other things we're doing, we are supporting that. That's the message of God to us. Laying it out, the Ten Commandments, as recorded in Exodus, it tells us, now notice the thou shalt not, and the shalt not, and the shalt. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. Yeah. Thou shalt not make any graven image. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Don't work on the Sabbath. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not be a false witness. Thou shalt not cover. What did all that just tell me? It told me how to love God and how to love my neighbor. Yeah. That's all it did. It told me how to love God and how to love my neighbor. I look at the fruit of the Spirit. When I walk into the new covenant, I don't bring this with me. When I walk into the new covenant, I start looking at the Spirit working in me. Yes. What does the Spirit do? The Spirit brings in me love. Mm -hmm. Love is not going to let me kill. God's going to let me commit adultery. Not going to let me steal. Not going to let me be a false witness. It's not going to let me covet my neighbor yeah. anything. Amen. I don't have to do it because the commandment say not to. Amen. The love of God in my heart yeah. will not let me do it. Amen. And comes with that joy, peace in the midst of whatever's going on. Long suffering, what does that mean? I'm going to take whatever I need to take in order for my neighbor yeah. To find Christ. I'm going to jump in the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. I'm going to work towards the good of my neighbor, the good of one another. Yeah. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. These are the things that only the Spirit of God can provide in us. Right. We can't do this on our own. Right. But if I had the fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. all of the fruit of the Spirit in me, I can live within the guidelines of God. I don't need commandments. To guide me because my love will do that. All right. The love that God has put in me. This is the difference between the letter and the spirit. The letter kills because there's, there's, there's more than this. There's more than this. There's 600 plus more. Mm -hmm. I can't do all those things. One writer told us that our fathers couldn't keep all of those covenants, all of those laws. No. Couldn't do it. But if I get the Spirit of God, guess what? I don't have to work for these. The Spirit of God is going to bring these to me. Oh, yeah. They are the fruit, the product of the Spirit of God. So why don't I just repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, so all these will come with it. Yes. Amen. Keep in mind as we go through the lesson, we're going to be talking about kingdom values. Values are judgment of what is important in life. Judgment it, it is of what is important in life. That's what value is. You're talking about what is real, what is important, what really matters. Yeah. That's what our values are. The things that drives us, the things that moves us. Under kingdom principle, and I'm using a different word, not value, but kingdom principle, you have the king, the subject, the territory, and the law. Yeah. The laws are based on the king. Mm -hmm. It is the king that set the law. Yeah. So if I think about the kingdom of God, the king sets the law, which means the king established what the values are. Yes, yes. What that tells me is the values of the kingdom of God are established by God. Mm -hmm. So if I want to know <coughs> God's value, I have to know God. Yeah. If I want to know what's important to God, I have to know God. Amen. And God left us 66 books that teaches us who He is, who we are, our relationship with Him, our relationship with each other. So that's what's important to God. When we look at God's dealing with Israel, God got difficult with Israel, or how you want to call it, judgment of Israel, over two things and two things only. Yes. How they treated Him and how they treated each other. Amen. We today are called into reckoning based on how we treat God yes. and how we treat one another. Amen. It goes back to John. John told us, believe on the name of Jesus Christ yes. and love one, another. love one another. So it all comes together 
in that we love God and love one another. How do I love God? I believe in the gift that he gave me. What is the gift he gave me? Jesus Christ. How do I believe on Jesus Christ? I follow the patterns. Repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How do I love one another? I share with them what I just got. The Spirit, the ministry of reconciliation. Any questions on what we're saying? Because this is the heart of the gospel of Christ. If you knew no more than just that, Amen. If you do no more than just that, you can run on the rest of your life in obedience to God. If you knew just that, if you knew just who God was, how, uh, who you are in Christ, how to love God, how to love your neighbors, if you knew that, you'd be running in the right direction. If you knew just that, repent, baptize in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and walk in the ministry of reconciliation. That's how we love one another. Yes. I want to look at how Paul assessed or talks about the value of the kingdom. Let us walk through 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 21. Before we get into our lesson verses, we're talking about the values of the kingdom. Kingdom values. Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Paul is saying, I couldn't talk to you in a spiritual way. You know, we, we go back to this. He's saying, I, I couldn't talk to you in this kind of language. I had to kind of talk to you somehow in this kind of language. Uh -huh. If you're not governed by the Spirit of God, then you need laws. Yeah. Paul also wrote and said the law is not for a righteous man. Mm -hmm. It's not for somebody that's walking in the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give laws to somebody that's walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God will guide, will lead. The Spirit of love, the power of love, yeah. the power of joy, the power of peace, the power of long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I can control myself. Mm -hmm. All of this will keep you yes, in order with the kingdom values. Amen. But if you don't have that, I need to give you some laws. Mm. Which is why Paul is saying, I can't deal with you as spiritual. I got to deal with you as carnal right now. Even as if I'm dealing with babes in Christ. And he identifies why. I have fed you with milk. I, I got to talk to you naturally. And not with me. I can't talk to you in a spiritual manner. For hereunto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. He said, I know you're not spiritually minded. I know you're still carnally minded. How do I know that? For ye are yet carnal minded, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Can you tell me you're not carnal? These things are the stamp of carnalness. You're envying, the strife, there's a vision. Are you not carnal and walk like men, people without the Spirit of God? And what Paul is showing us is there's a real difference. Now he's talking to the to the saved world. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the Christian environment, the Christian yeah. community, uh -huh. with the church at Corinth. Uh -huh. And he's saying to them, I see in you these carnalness, so much so that I can't talk to you in spiritual things. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? While you are taking the gospel of Christ, and you're pointing to a man as the gospel of Christ, he said, that's carnal. Mm -hmm. It is never about a man. It is always about Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. If I can only hear from if I can only listen to, if I am under the authority of a man, then Paul is saying to you, you're still calm. You're still calm. You know, it's it's Black History Month. Black History Month. And we spend a lot of time talking about how police officers treat black people different and so forth and so on. And we look for the solutions and we try to figure out how to fix this, train them more and all of that. None of that's going to work. Mm. 
Because what you have done is you've taken a man and you've given him authority. Oh, Lord. You've given him absolute authority. Wow. And when you give some man absolute authority, you have given him the right to be an absolute man. That's not going to make him just before God. He's not going to turn righteous. He's going to be more of who he are. And one, one writer said, I know that in my flesh is no good thing. Yeah. You can't give somebody absolute control and expect it will be to your benefit. Yes. Oh. Yes. And I'm saying that to the church world too. Mm -hmm. When you submit yourself to a man, woman, boy or girl, Absolutely. Yes. You have deceived yourself and empowered that person to be an absolute authority in your life, and that is never to your benefit. Yes. Amen. 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 Never. Never. You can't take a man and give him the authority of God and expect him to walk in obedience to God. Mm. I hope I'm being clear. Mm. I hope I'm being clear. The worst thing you can do to a person is give them absolute authority. That's the worst thing you can do to a person. As Christians, we don't need to do that. We don't want to bow to anybody but Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not put another authority in your life. If you love them, if you love them, do not give them absolute authority. If you love them, no man is going to take absolute authority and do right with it. Why? Because in our flesh, is no good thing. Amen. And, uh, all right, I hope I said enough on that. So, and, and what Paul is saying is, I, one of y'all, y'all get together and y'all say, I'm a Paul, and another say, I am a Paul. He said, when you do these kind of things, know that you're carnal. Mm -hmm. Who then is Paul? Who is he? Well, who's a Paul? Now, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul. He said, who is Paul? Mm -hmm. Who is Apostle? But ministers, now ministers again, doesn't mean you got bishops, elders, reverends, ministers. That doesn't mean that. These are servants. He said, but then who is Paul? Who's the Paul? But ministers, servants by whom you believe. We're the one that God used to bring you the word. Anybody that God used to bring the word to you is a minister yeah. in your life. Amen. I don't care if it's your mama, your sister, your brother, even your kid. Yeah. If God used them, they are in the ministry yeah. of reconciliation. Yeah. They are servants of God. Yes, they are. Doing the purpose of God. And Paul says, see us for no more than who we are. Mm -hmm. Kingdom value. What then? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Every man. And even the things you see us doing, it's from God. It's not about us. Right. I have planted. I came to you first. I was here first. Talked to you first. I planted. Uh -huh. Paulus came along and he added water to that. Yes, he did. But he didn't cause you to grow and neither did I. But it's God that gives the arms. I can preach till I turn blue in the face. Mm -hmm. It does nothing for you mm -hmm. until God engages. Yes. God is still the hero. Oh, yes. What that means is you say, you know what? I heard this message. Mm -hmm. I heard this lesson. Mm -hmm. And boy, did I get something out of that. Mm -hmm. What you got out of that was a word from God. Yes. Not the voice to speak. Because sometimes, I'm going to tell you, sometimes... We run our mouth and you hear everything but what we think we're saying. Mm -hmm. Because God intervened. Yes, he does. God intervened. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you, you, you see and you can tell, you watch in, in preachers' notes and so forth. They write their sermon out and they say, at this point, this is my high point. Mm -hmm. and, and they expect when they get to that point, you going to jump up and shout, yell, scream, whoop and all. Mm -hmm. They get to that point sometimes and you do not look at them and say, hmm. <laughs> then the place where they call themselves just doing an introduction, you all excited about it. Why? Because it's not how we see it. It's how God is dealing with every listener. And God deals with you based on who you are. So Paul is saying, yeah, I plan all the waters, but it's God that actually gives the increase. Yeah. So then neither is he that planteth anything, yeah. neither he that watereth is anything. But God that giveth the increase. Yes. yes, yes. God that giveth the increase. Uh, if 
you're going to have authority in your life, let it be the word of God. The increase comes from your relationship with God and not with anybody else. And Paul is saying, if you are doing that, then you're carnal. You're still carnal. That's what carnality is about. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. We are doing the same thing. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. In other words, I came and I planted. Whatever Paulus does doesn't affect my relationship with God. Whatever I did doesn't affect Apollo's relationship with God. What affects Apollo's relationship with God is what Apollo's does. What's between Apollo's and God has nothing to do with Paul and God. Now he that planted and he that was the one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together, yes. co-workers Co with God. Mm. Me and Apollos, we are just workers together. We are co-workers. Mm. Notice how the Apostle Paul is not saying, I am the Apostle, no. and then comes Apollos, no. and whoever might be under Apollos. Mm. He said we are co-laborers. Yes. An Apostle and a, I don't even know if he was an elder. <laughs> but here's Apollos. No title, but we are co-workers. We are laborers, look it up as co-workers, together yes. with God. Yes. Ye are God's husbandry, vineyard, his field. Mm -hmm. Ye are God's building, the yes. structure for yes. the foundation. Mm -hmm. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, God put in me what I have yes. as a wise master builder, a minister of reconciliation. Ooh. I have laid the foundation, I got to eat first, and when I talked to you, I told you about Jesus and Jesus Christ. He said, I have laid the foundation, and another come along, Apollos, and he starts building on that foundation. Yes, he did. He said, now let every man take heed how he built their upon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. And what's the foundation? Which is Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not going to preach any Jesus and Jesus alone, you're putting the wrong thing on the foundation. Amen. The apostles came and they're called apostles because they were given the job of laying the foundation. Yes. They came along and the foundation they laid was Jesus Christ. Yes, it was. Paul went to the Gentiles and the foundation he laid was Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he is saying, you can't build man.